Hello folks, uh, we're now at project two and I uh, put together this little video uh, to help um, provide a few elements um, that may be useful during this um, next project process. Uh, so according to the handout that you should have at this point, uh, you have a part A and you have a part B. And uh, part A and part B were both briefly explained uh, in still pictures at the beginning of this video. But as a refresher, um, the viewfinder should look like this, right? So you have a two inch by two inch uh, window cut from a scrap piece of paper so you can scan over the surface of your dynamic landscape uh, and hopefully find something that would be useful uh, to copy and use for the final tessellation uh, design process. Okay, so to help you understand that perhaps a little bit better, I'm going to use a drawing that I have laying around uh, the studio and I'm going to use this uh, with the viewfinder um, to show how to go about looking for an area that you might want to use uh, for your um, tessellation project. Okay, so basically uh, it's pretty straightforward. You take your viewfinder, right, and you move it across the surface. You can lay it flatter if you like and you move it across the surface of your dynamic landscape and that's what you should be using for this uh, part of the process uh, and you keep going over it right you keep moving over the surface until perhaps you find an area um, that you think might be useful uh, to make a copy of um, and that copy will then right represent uh, your two inch by two inch tile that you'll make more copies of to create your tessellation patterns. I don't quite like that. Um, there's a lot of information here in this drawing. Um, this looks like a pretty good fit. Um, oh, there you go. All right, so that's pretty nice. So um, basically, I think I'm gonna choose this out of convenience. And uh, essentially, once you have isolated your area, you can now either take a picture of this, right, with your phone camera, or you could take this, turn it around uh, over a scanner and scan it. That would also be a good way. Um, you can also lay down a piece of tracing paper. Uh, if this is uh, one method that might work for you, if you don't have the other methods and actually trace out uh, the black and white spaces and then fill this in as black, leave this as white uh, and then make a copy of that design. So you want a nice, flat, um, clear and accurate copy of the section uh, that you choose. Okay, so that's how you would do that. Um, and that's basically it up to this point. So let's stop here and then we'll move on uh, to the next part. Okay, so we left off at part B and covered uh, the first um, element in part C which was how to copy uh, the tile once you've made a choice on the pattern or configuration that you like the most um, and once you've done that you need to make 40 copies uh, of that tile so you can work with those um, paper copies uh, to make your overall tessellation design and I have done that uh, so I have my illustration board here uh, I have my 12 by 12 inch window where these tiles need to fit um, as I try to uh, create a nice overall pattern or a tessellation in this space. Uh, and to do that, uh, you need to take out your tiles um, and lay them out. Uh, typically to work out the beginning of what patterns you may be interested in, it's always good to use at least uh, four tiles in the beginning, right? And then you can look at how they may uh, connect to each other or what sort of sequences you think uh, work best or perhaps produce the most interesting uh, designs in that four square panel that you're developing. And once you make one, you can then set it up to the side or place it in a space. There's no need to glue it yet. You may wanna look um, and other variations 
of this four square. But if you like what you have, then you can always then think about how, how will that repeat, right? How will you do another one? Um, and part of the process of creating this overall tessellation is either looking at these little four square blocks and then joining another four square block uh, and another uh, four square block and look at sequences that way. Or you can look at sequences that maybe have slight uh, shifts, right? So I have one down, this one down, um, and then I go with this one up, and then perhaps I go this one down, right? Choosing this as my downside, and then I go again with this one down, and then I go with this one up. Um, and then part of this is I'm creating a sequence, uh, and then I would maybe repeat that sequence in the next row and see how perhaps uh, they line up inside that type of sequence. So I do another one, then I repeat. Um, I repeat that process again, all right? And then see how that looks. And this is basically um, how you will do this uh, process. You will try to find, uh, you know, a sequence or pattern that you think creates an interesting overall um, design and tessellation inside uh, this window. So I would keep building on this row after row. Uh, I might find something I like. If not, right, I can just take it all back and I can begin again um, experimenting with another group of tiles. Um, and this is the process. So as you do this, Take your time, reflect, right, on what you're looking for. Uh, try um, to find something that you're engaged with, but obviously that also produces um, a stimulating design uh, that has some unity, some balance, uh, and some on, all over uh, pattern uh, qualities. All right, so that's it for this part. Um, we'll move on to the last part, uh, and then hopefully you should be ready to get going uh, on this project. Okay, we're at the end of part D for project two, uh, which is to create a nice overall pattern or tessellation uh, and a 12 by 12 inch uh, square. Uh, so at this point, uh, you should have taken a little bit of time and looked at some configurations or some pattern development um, sequences uh, that would have provided a nice tessellation uh, with um, unity uh, and balance throughout the entire composition. Uh, so this is the one I'm gonna settle on. It's pretty basic, uh, but I think it drives home the point about some of the objectives uh, that you'd be looking for uh, in this project. Um, so now that I have what I like, I have to now attach uh, these pieces of paper to the surface of the illustration board. And the suggested uh, adhesive uh, for this project was rubber cement, basically something like this. Um, all the rubber cement comes with a little brush uh, and uh, handle attached to the lid. You know, brush the medium on the back um, of the little squares and then attach them to the illustration board. Um, as you do this, be mindful of the craft. Uh, take your time. Make sure there aren't any gaps as you put these things down more permanently. Uh, so there's a nice, clean, accurate, and clear uh, design uh, in the finished project. All right, so that's it. I hope this helped. Uh, if you need any more questions answered, feel free to send me an email about this project, uh, and hopefully I'll have an answer for you. All right, see you later.